This is Lugodowski of WeAreChange.org. I'm here with Everett Stern, who is an HSBC whistleblower. Now, Mr. Stern, can you tell us what you found that HSBC was doing? Sure. Uh, what I found was uh, criminal manipulation of the wire filter. So there are certain names that uh, OFAC fans were, certain companies and people we can't do business with. Uh, and they're listed in an actual filter. Uh, so what these geniuses at HSBC figured out was to just change the codings of, on the names a little bit, add a dash, uh, 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 I'm sorry, a, a dot or a dash, uh, so it wouldn't match with the wire filter and the payments would go through. Wow. Uh, and that's how hundreds of millions of dollars went from Kariba supermarkets in Africa, uh, in Gambia, to um, Tajiko in Lebanon, which is owned by the Tajain brothers, which are financiers of Hezbollah. What kind of organizations, what kind of groups were on that list? Uh, terrorist organizations, uh, Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, uh, drug cartels, uh, Russian mobsters, um, any bad guy you can possibly think of. Yeah. So you discovered how HSBC was manipulating code in order to wire money and do money laundering for terrorists and criminals and gangs? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Holy cow! I mean, that's just... I mean. Did they do this for the sole purpose of greed, or like, I, I know it's hard to theorize, but why do you think HSBC did this? I don't know. I can't. I can't comment on, on why on why they did it. But I'll tell you though how they're still doing it. What they did was is that when I joined, they only had maybe 15 compliance officers in the whole whole department uh, in Newcastle, Delaware. So what they did was they sold off the, the their credit card division to Capital One, and they took all these debt collectors and customer service agents and they fired them and then they rehired them as anti-money laundering compliance officers and with no AML experience, nothing, and they're still there now approving transactions and they showed the government, oh wow, we have this huge anti-money laundering compliance program when the whole thing's a sham. There is no anti-money laundering program. Can you tell us how you found these documents, how you found this important, huge leak? Through, in through simple uh, internet searches and uh, having two brain cells in my brain. And you were working there, and that's how you were able to uncover everything. Yeah, I was a uh, anti-money laundering compliance officer there uh, out of business school. I was a candidate for the clandestine service before I joined HSBC. Um, and I joined October 2010. Uh, three weeks in, I started passing information to the CIA and was doing that for about a year. And my major thing I wanted to know is becoming a whistleblower, how was that? What consequences did you face? How are you right now? Are you facing any legal troubles? What's, what's happening with you coming out and blowing the whistle on this very important case? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, HSBC is uh, threatening me with legal action. Um, I really don't care. I, you know, uh, but I mean, it's a national security issue. My sole objective is to protect the United States of America. Um, so I don't care. Uh, but we have, um, you know, I have a massive legal team that is fighting them. Uh, and it's filing with the government. Uh, there's an ongoing investigation against them now. Um, and um, yeah, it was hard though, becoming whistleblower. I mean, a lot of people, until, until the media really started reporting on it, I would say until the Rolling Stone article, that's, that's when, right when, right, right when I was featured in Rolling Stone, that's when I had more of, of people supporting me and they're like, oh wow, this guy's actually doing a good thing. Before it was, this guy is just, you know, doing an off end type, type deal. It's what, very hard. Was HSBC held responsible for their criminal activity? No, they were, they were, I mean, they were fined 1.9 billion dollars um, and they should have gone to jail. I, I mean, they, 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 again, like if I were to donate one dollar to Hamas or Hezbollah, I'd go to jail for life. I mean, these guys are just no consequence at all and they're still doing it. And we're not talking about a dollar, like how much money are we talking about? Talking about billions, wow. billions of dollars. And we're talking to the Zeta drug cartel. I mean, 500,000 Americans die a year from drugs. And, and we're, I mean, a block away, there's a bank that's giving money to the drug cartels. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the NYPD here, I mean, they're, get, they're getting killed in the streets. With, you know, at 9-11, you got firefighters. Done. I mean, from a block away from here, and, and they're supporting it, and we're allowing that to go on. Yeah. All because the administration says they don't want to cause a financial crisis. Yeah. If there's another 9-11, I can guarantee you that's going to cause another financial crisis. It brought too big to fail to a whole nother level, and it's really disgusting, but it's amazing and beautiful to have human beings like you who are willing to speak out, and I mean this truly because it's amazing what you did. Now, we're here at Occupy Wall Street. Now, I know this isn't probably typically your crowd, but can you tell us why you are here today? I'm here today because this 
even though as a conservative Republican, this transcends the political issues. Um, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I mean, again, I disagree with a lot of what these people are saying. I really do, to be honest with you. But I, they are willing, they care enough where they're willing to unite against a common enemy and they care. They just want the best for the country too. So it, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm with I'm with these people, and I I, I believe in that caring, and um, I think it's great that they're out here with signs protesting. It's awesome. Thank you so much for your heroic actions. People could find you on Stern Everett.